Hello grade 10s. Today we will look at the type of bonding that takes place between a metal and a non-metal. A neutral atom of a metal or a non-metal has equal numbers of protons plus and electrons minus and the overall particle charge is zero. That is, there is no overall electric charge. The proton or atomic number in an atom never changes, but the number of associated electrons can. Atoms of metallic elements can lose electrons from their outer level. This results in an excess positive charge from the protons in the nucleus. This positive ion is called a cation. Usually, a non-metallic element gains electrons. This results in an excess of negative charge, so a negative ion called an anion is formed. When atoms lose or gain electrons, they do so to attain a full electron energy level, like the very stable atoms of the group 18 noble gases. The charge on the ion is numerically related to the number of electrons transferred. If two electrons are transferred, the charge will be plus two. If three electrons are transferred, the charge is plus three. An ionic bond is the force of attraction between adjacent ions of opposite charge. The ionic bonding forces act in all directions around a particular ion. An example of ionic bonding occurs between sodium and chlorine. Let's join Nelly to look at an animation to show this bond. The metal loses electrons to form positive ions and the non-metal gains electrons to form negative ions. The ions are held together by strong electrostatic forces in a crystal lattice. Thank you Nelly. Let's look at this process more closely. Na is sodium, a metal. Sodium is part of a metallic lattice and the individual atoms must first break away from this lattice. This shows the Lewis dot diagram for the neutral sodium atom, which has one valence electron. Sodium has a tendency to lose one electron to become more stable. Chlorine is a diatomic molecule, and so for it to take part in ionic bonding, it must first break up into two atoms of chlorine. Cl is the symbol for chlorine. The Lewis dot diagram for the neutral chlorine element has seven valence electrons, which are shown in blue. Sodium loses an electron and becomes a cation, a positive ion. Chlorine gains an electron and forms an anion, a negative ion. Sodium has one less electron than protons, so it has formed a positive cation. Chlorine has one more electron than protons, so it has formed a negative ion called an anion. Ionic compounds must be balanced. The sum of the positive and negative charges must be equal to zero. Anions and cations are held together by opposite charges. An ionic bond occurs between metal and non-metal atoms, where transfer of electrons takes place and the electrostatic force of attraction between the resulting oppositely charged ions holds the atoms together. But this is not the full picture. Remember how Nelly showed us the formation of the crystal lattice? This is because the transfer of electrons does not take place between a single sodium atom and a single chlorine atom, but takes place between many billions of atoms. These particles join together in a very ordered giant lattice. The smallest unit of this lattice is made up of four sodium ions and four chloride ions. Three, four. This is called the unit cell. We use the unit cell to think about the special arrangements of the atoms and to determine the formula. In the unit cell, the ratio of sodium to chlorine is one to one. So the chemical formula is written as NaCl. Even though there is never ever just one sodium and chlorine in a structure. In fact, the unit cell is repeated many billions of times in one tiny crystal of sodium chloride. This is a more accurate model of sodium chloride than the one provided by Lewis diagrams. Thank you, Nelly.
Ionic substances are actually a combination of lots of formula units bonded together into a giant molecule. The regular arrangement of alternative positive and negative ions in an ionic solid is called a crystal lattice. In a crystal lattice, the ions are locked in place, unable to move around. This is why they can't conduct electricity. What about the name of these compounds? The first word in the name is the name of the cation. The second word comes from the name of the anion. The name of the anion is the same as the name of the element, except that the end of the element name is taken off and "-ied", is added to the end. As we see, chlorine becomes chloride. The charge of metal ions formed from transition metals can change. These different ions of the same element make quite different compounds. Iron 2 plus forms yellow-green solutions, while iron 3 plus forms yellow-brown solutions. This change in color is characteristic of transition metals. All transition metals have more than one valency, except for silver, which has a valency of 1 and zinc, which has a valency of 2. Stock notation is where we write the valency of a transition metal in Roman numerals. It is used to name elements in compounds with variable valencies. We write the valency of the metal atom in Roman numerals in brackets behind the metal. The iron chloride is written as iron 2 chloride. Let's look at the chemical formula. Iron, in this case, has a valency of 2 and chlorine has a valency of 1. To write the formula, we swap this ratio. We need two chlorine atoms and one iron atom. The formula is thus FeCl2. If the formula given is FeCl3, we will know that the iron atom has a valency of 3 because the subscript 3 on the chlorine atom. We need three chlorine atoms to bond with an iron 3 atom. The stock notation for this compound is written as iron 3 chloride. Let's have a look at the formula of a compound that contains a transition metal and see if we can name it using the stock notation. The compound has the formula of MnO2. We can't be sure of the valency of manganese since it is the transition metal. How do we find the valency of Mn? We know that oxygen has a valency of 2. That means the oxide ion has a charge of minus 2 and there are two oxide ions shown in this formula. The overall charge on this compound is 0. Therefore, the manganese ion must have a charge of plus 4. This means it has a valency of 4. So we can name the compound manganese 4 oxide. Remember, the Roman numeral IV means 4. Let's try another example, Mn2O3. Mn is a transition element, so we can't be sure of its valency, but we do know that oxygen has a valency of 2. That means the total charge from oxygen is minus 6. The manganese ion must have an overall charge of plus 6, but there are two atoms of manganese present, so each must have a charge of plus 3. The chemical formula is manganese 3 oxide. Can you see a shortcut? If you uncross the subscripts, you can see that this corresponds to the valencies of M, N and O. You can use this as a check. If the anion has more than one type of atom, then we call it a composite ion. These compound ions carry a charge of one or two positive or negatives, even as much as three negatives. They act as a group when they form compounds. They are also called radicals or polyatomic ions. Here are some examples. Remember that these ions function as a group. Let's take this new information together with what we know about writing chemical formulae and put it into practice. We will look at sodium sulfate. We start by writing down the symbols Na plus and SO subscript 4 2 minus the sum of the charges must be 0. To do this, we need 2 sodium and 1 sulfate ion. So the formula would be Na2SO4. 
let's look at an example of a formula containing two composite ions, ammonium carbonate. The symbols with their charges on the ions are NH4 plus and CO3 2 minus. We can see the total charge of these ions is not zero. We need two ammonium ions and one carbonate ion to make the total charge zero. To write two ammonium ions, we have to use brackets to keep the composite ion together. We write open brackets NH4, close brackets, subscript 2, CO3. The last substance is iron 3 sulfate. The symbols are Fe3 plus and SO42 minus. To get an overall charge of zero, we need two Fe3 plus ions and three SO4 minus ions. Now the total charge is zero, six plus and six negative. The formula of the compound is written as Fe2 open bracket SO4 close bracket three. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.